In this video, you're going to learn about function notation, and we're going to go through some introductory examples, and then we're going to do two story problems together to show you how to work with this function notation. So first of all, when we talk about function notation, let's go back a little bit and just talk about equations for a minute. Say you had an equation like y is equal to 2x plus 1. Now, if we wanted to graph y equals 2x plus 1, you would make a table like this. You'd make an xy table, and you'd say, hmm, let me pick some values for x. I'm going to put them in. I'm going to simplify. I'm going to get my, my outputs, my y values. And so this is a good way to, to, to graph. That's one way that we learned initially. But you'll notice that the x variable we typically call the independent variable. It's what we put into the equation. And then the y is typically what we call the dependent variable. It depends on what you put in for x. So it's like the output. So we think of x's as the input, y's as the outputs. But when it comes to function notation, you'll notice you'll see this f of x or g of x or h of x. You know, what does that mean? Well, it's a different way of writing that whatever's in the parentheses, that's our input. And what comes out, or f of x, that's our output, or our g of x is our output, or our h of x is our output. So it's just kind of a descriptive way of saying, okay, whatever's in the parentheses, that's going to go in for x on the right side. So for example, if I want to evaluate, which remember, evaluate just means find the value, okay, of f of 2, that means that wherever I see x, I'm going to replace it with the number 2. So I'm going to say 2, instead of x, I'm going to put 2 in, and then I'm going to simplify. Now, whenever I do a substitution, I like to put it in parentheses, treat it like a group. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so we could say that f of 2 is equal to 5. 2 is our x value, and then our y value, or our output, or our f of x value, is 5. Let's do another one. Now, this one, f of x is equal to 7. So what this is really telling us, this is really telling us that our y value, or our output, is equal to 7. So what we would do is we'd go to our function here and we'd say, hmm, this f of x, this y value is 7. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve for this input, this x value. So now all we have to do is subtract 1 from both sides, that's 6. Divide both sides by 2, and you can see that x is equal to 3. Now you could write this like this, you could say f of 3 is equal to 7. This is your input. It's in parentheses. It's what goes in for x on the right. And then our output, or our y value, is 7. Let's take a look at another function. Let's take a look at this one here. We've got g of x is equal to 3x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now the g of x, you can think of that just like y, like our output. So if they say, okay, what's g of 1? That's really saying that if I put 1 in place of x, that's going to be my y value or my answer or my output. Now in this particular one, notice how there's an x here and here. So whatever's in parentheses goes in for x on the right side of the equation, no matter how many different x's there are. So in this case, we're going to say replace x with 1. Notice I'm putting it in parentheses. And then let's simplify. So we have 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 4. So we get 5 plus 4, which is 9. So g of 1 equals 9. Remember, the 1 is the x value. The 9 is the y value. You could write this as a coordinate. Input, output, independent, dependent. Whatever's in the parentheses goes in, and what comes out is like your output or your answer. Let's look at one more introductory example before we get to the word problems. h of x, now you can name your function whatever you want. Like if uh, this is Mario right here, I could say m of x. I'm going to call it the Mario function, right? But you could even take it one step further and say, well, hmm, maybe h stands for like the height of something. Or maybe g stands for the number of games. Or maybe f stands for the number of uh, football footballs or something like that. So it's a little bit more descriptive. Instead of always saying y, 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 it's like, what does y really mean? Well, we know it's the, the output. It's a little bit more descriptive. We could say, oh, this is the height of something. Okay. And instead of x, we could maybe call this a t, like maybe for time. So it's a way of being more descriptive. Okay, that's the idea behind the function notation. So if we want to find out h of 2, we say, oh, whatever's in parentheses, that's going in for x on the right. Again, you want to put it in parentheses like this, treat it like a group. Uh, 2 cubed is 8, minus 1 is equal to 7, so we can say h of 2 
that's how we pronounce it, h of 2 equals 7 or is 7. This is your x, this is your y. Now, let's look at this one. This is a little bit different. There's nothing in parentheses. There's just that variable x, but they're saying that the answer is 26. They're saying that the output, the y value, this quantity is 26. So what we can do is we can solve for x, which is our input. I'm going to add one to both sides. So that's going to give us 27 equals x cubed. And then we're going to take the cube root of both sides. Cube root of 27 is 3. So what that tells us is h of 3 is equal to 26. 3 is the input, 26 is the output. Let's take a look at those two word problems now. Okay, we have this function here, b of w is equal to 1w plus 2. And it says that b of w represents the number of books that you have read during summer vacation after w weeks. Find and describe the meaning of b of 3, b of 0, and b of w equals 10. So notice how descriptive this is. b means the number of books that you've read after w weeks, right? So we're using that first letter of our uh, quantity to help us you know, remember what it, what it is. So you can see that the number of weeks is our independent variable. It's what goes into the function on the right. And what comes out is the number of books that we've read. So we're making a formula to kind of help us. So if we say, what's b of 3? What we would do is we would replace w with 3. And 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5. But what does that mean? Well, it means after three weeks, we've read five books, okay, over our summer vacation. Now, over here, letter B, what is B of 0? And what does it mean? Well, remember, whatever's in parentheses goes in for the variable on the right. So this is going to be 1. We're going to replace W, the number of weeks, with 0. And you can see 1 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. So b of 0 equals 2 means after 0 weeks, we've read 2 books. Now you can say, how could that be? Well, maybe you know, you've, already, you've got a stack of books and you've already read 2 of them and the summer vacation is just starting and you say, okay, how many books have I read out of this stack of books? Well, I've already read the first 2 and I'm planning on reading 1 book per week. And so that's what's happening is, you know, after so many weeks, you can calculate how many books that you've read, but the initial amount of books that you've read is 2. Uh, so that's part B. And then for letter C, B of W equals 10. Now this is a little bit different. Remember how we said that B of W or F of X or G of X, that's kind of like our, our Y value or our output. So here they're saying that this whole quantity right here, B of W, is 10. So we're saying 10 equals 1W plus 2. Okay, if we subtract 2 from both sides, we get 1w, which is just w, is equal to 8. So what does that mean? It means that after 8 weeks, we'll have read 10 books. So here, what they're doing is they're giving us the answer, or the y value, and we're solving for the input, or the number of weeks. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number 2 now, we have h of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 64, and h of t represents the height of an object in feet above the ground t seconds after it is dropped. Find the following and explain what it represents. So look what we've done here, function notation. See, t is the time, that's what we're gonna be putting in. And what comes out, or the answer, or our y value is gonna be the height. So h of t represents the height, t represents the time after the object's dropped. So what does this mean, h of 0? Well, h of 0 means that we're going to be putting 0 in place of t. So 0 squared is 0, times negative 16 is 0, plus 64 is equal to 64. But what does that mean? It means that after 0 seconds, which means right as soon as you let go of the object, it's 64 feet above the ground. So this is the initial height. Now, letter B, what's h of 1? Well, here, remember, whatever's in parentheses goes in for t on the right. So this is going to be negative 16 times 1 squared plus 64, which is equal to, let's see, 1 squared is 1 times negative 16 is negative 16 plus 64 is 48. 
So we're going to say h of 1 is equal to 48. But what does that mean? It means after one second, because remember the t is the time in seconds, h of 1, which is the height, is 48 feet. So after one second, the object's falling, it's 48 feet above the ground. Letter C now, what's this one? h of t is equal to 0. See here they're actually telling us what is the answer, what is the output. The output is 0. So what we're really doing is we're saying, hmm, when the height is 0, that means that's when the object, you see it's falling, that's when it actually the height is 0, 0 feet above the ground. Originally it started at 64 feet above the ground, right? But we want to know how much time it took for it to actually hit the ground. That's what we're solving for. But you can see h of t, this whole quantity is 0, so I'm going to replace this with 0. So let's do that. And we're going to solve for t. So I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides of the equation. And then we're going to solve for t by dividing both sides by negative 16. And this comes out to 4 is equal to t squared. And then the square root, the square and the square root cancel. So the time is equal to 2. So what does that mean? It means after 2 seconds, the object is going to hit the ground. So remember, functions is really just a different way of writing equations in a more descriptive way. If you want more examples and you want to get more practice, follow me over to that video I did right there, talking more about function notation, evaluating functions, and more about how functions work. I'll see you over in that video.